Stallington Hall was opened by Stoke-on-Trent City Council in 1931 as a home for mental defectives. Originally, the hall had been the home of the Hill Child family, but came into the possession of the city when the line died out. Stallington expanded into a colony over the following decade, as the various villas, workshops and support services were commissioned and built. Progress was interrupted by the Second World War, but resumed afterwards, and by 1948 all building was completed. In that same year, responsibility passed from the city of Stoke-on-Trent to the newly formed National Health Service. Two further wards were added in 1956. At its maximum, Stallington once housed over 700 people. Revised legislation in the form of the Mental Health Act of 1959 brought about significant changes in the care of mentally handicapped people, and those changes have been reflected in the hospital. There's been a gradual reduction in evident numbers, significant increases in staffing levels, and gradual change from institution to home. Stallington Hall, formerly known as Stallington Hospital, was a medium-sized residential facility for people with learning disabilities. It consisted of a number of large buildings, mainly purpose-built, which were spread around a large, relatively rural site. It had its own network of roads and two entrances. Clearly, Stallington was an inappropriate place in which to care for large numbers of people with learning disabilities. And in common with most other hospitals in the United Kingdom, efforts were made from the 1970s to move people into more appropriate accommodation. In the late 1980s, this resettlement program escalated, and the hospital is due to close in 1997. One of the hospital's main advantages was to provide a relatively safe environment for people. Here we would find residents able to wander around a large, pleasant site. Staff and residents often made strenuous efforts to personalise their environments, for example, watering plants outside one of the houses, in much the same way that any of us would do in our own home. The interiors of the houses were typically larger than would be found in one's normal home, but staff made efforts within these restrictions to make the environment as homely as possible. Many people had single rooms, and where it was necessary for people to share, then spaces were divided up to give as much privacy as possible. Residents had their own possessions around them, including photographs of family and friends. Stallington even had its own shop. One of the advantages of this was that it was a facility for staff and residents to use, as Stallington is one and a quarter miles from the nearest shopping centre. It also enabled residents to learn about shopping, and most importantly, to learn to interact with other people, prior to integration into the community. Importantly, at Stallington, there was an availability of different therapies nursing staff, occupational therapists, physiotherapists and others specifically trained to help people with learning disabilities to acquire new skills and to alleviate the effects of their impairments. The importance of this cannot be understated since it's now well established that without the structured help and therapy which such professionals are well placed to give, many people with learning disabilities have great difficulty in learning the everyday skills which most people take for granted. Tasks have to be broken down into their components, and each step taught separately. It's not enough to simply expose a person with a learning disability to an ordinary living task, and expect them to acquire it in the way that people without intellectual impairments appear to do. Even something as simple as knowing when to turn off a tap can be very difficult. Therapeutic hydrotherapy sessions were provided for people with severe impairments. Hydrotherapy is a specific procedure designed to help people in their mobility and is carried out by qualified physiotherapists. Other therapeutic sessions have been transferred to community settings and are now delivered by community learning disability teams in line with individual needs. 
Stallington, of course, was never closed to the community in any sense. People would come in for various reasons, not only to visit specific people, but also, for example, to conduct church services. Stallington was really a small community, which is now being replaced by people being resettled in domestic-style houses in the community, with friends and near-to relatives. In April 1995, the first major phase of resettling people into the community from Stallington Hospital began. There are six planned phases, resulting in the hospital closing in 1997. People are given tenancies in properties throughout Staffordshire, purchased by a range of housing associations, and live together in groups of three, four or five. They're provided with 24-hour support by a team of staff from local organisations, including National Health Service Trusts and the independent sector. All the houses are situated in desirable residential areas and are bought to meet the particular needs of the group of people who are going to live there. Eventually, there'll be approximately 51 such houses. Each house has its own car, purchased using mobility allowance. This ensures people are able to go out and about in their local community. We all have the need for privacy and a place to call our own. So everyone has their own bedroom, with their own choice of furnishings and colour scheme. Most houses have more than one bathroom, or a separate shower room and toilet. Each house has an extra bedroom, so a member of the support staff can sleep in and be on hand in case of emergencies. Some houses have waking night staff. It all depends on the needs of the people living there. Five ladies live in this house, which is in a quiet cul-de-sac in Blythe Bridge. The house is spacious, with a large back garden. The ladies here have two large bathrooms, and two bedrooms have ensuite shower and toilet. Support staff help with preparing meals, housekeeping, and making sure everyone has a good quality of life. For many people, this is the first time they've had a home of their own, where they can exercise choice about what they want to eat, the clothes they buy and wear, and when and where they go out to. People are encouraged to do as much as possible for themselves, and are helped to learn new skills, including general housekeeping. A trip to the local supermarket to buy food is now a regular thing. Staff are always there to help and encourage people to make their own choices and become more independent. There are opportunities to sit and look through a magazine in the spacious and comfortable lounge. Relatives are encouraged to visit and for many it has led to the opportunity to share a new experience. Everyone has been given a book from the hospital containing important information about significant events in their lives with photographs of family and friends. The staffing levels mean more time for one-to-one -one support and time for quiet reflection. Another leafy suburb is home to three ladies who have lived for many years in the hospital. They share the house with their cat. For many, having a pet has been a new experience. Many things most people take for granted, such as making a cup of tea, are a new experience requiring patient instruction. New skills lead to greater independence and a sense of achievement. Regular trips to the local swimming pool in their own car provide an opportunity to use ordinary facilities near to their own home.
Four young men live in this five-bedroomed property. Kedwin has learned in a short time to make himself a simple snack. And John is making a coffee. Again, patient instruction is all important in building confidence and helping people acquire new skills. With John accompanying on the keyboard, playing the drums gives Eamon an opportunity for expression. For Kedwin, a woodworking class has given him the skills to make a tea tray and a box. Visits to the local pub for a drink and a bar meal at lunchtime, or a disco in the evening, provide an opportunity to relax and meet new people. Many people have taken up new hobbies. Kedwin enjoys brushing up on his golf strokes. And for John, horse riding is a great passion. After the chores are done, it's off to the local riding school for the weekly lesson. Eamon entertains everyone by singing a Christmas carol as he rides round. A sure sign he's enjoying himself. Moving into your own home opens up lots of opportunities to do ordinary things. People are also helped to take more responsibility for themselves. There was considerable resistance to the closure of Stellington from various parents and carer groups. This was based in part on the fear of what would happen to relatives once they left. We now know there's no real justification for such fears. <laughs>